All right. So from oh right, this is right. <laughs> yeah, right. You got him stumped there. <laughs> Blah, 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 blah. Did you? Could you tell us how how you would like it? I, I wonder if they're like if the if the V's are supposed to be spell it out. Like, I think that there's a black flag in there, in the uh, in, in the with, with I can't tell what's in that. It looks like a tree and like a uh, some kind of seal. But anyway, thank you very much for your five dollar super chat. Certainly getting you to the top of the pile this morning. Uh, black opal. There you go. Oh, there there you go. Yeah, there it is. Black. Yeah. yeah, black. I I wonder what the flag is still. Maybe he'll comment. Whoever this is will comment. We'll get another update from Jim later in the show. Black opal for five dollars with the super chat rights. It would be super interesting if Adam could do an episode about the history of intelligence agency spooks in the LP. You know what? Thank you for bringing that up uh, and, and, and for bringing that back to my attention. I, I greatly appreciate this, Black Opal. Um, I actually only found out about this recently. Um, I mean, I had suspected. You know, I mean, I had known in, in a sense where you know, like, yeah, that's, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if I was wrong. But, yeah, that's that's got to have happened at some point. But, yeah, I got it confirmed uh, for, from someone yesterday. And I, I started doing the research on the historical uh, infiltration uh, of the Libertarian Party, but intelligence agency spooks in particular, we will be getting to that uh, in future shows. Also, uh, a couple teasers ahead here. I just want to give uh, a shout out to a couple of people who have uh, asked for some stories to be covered on the show that we are going to get into that I, I just haven't had the time to properly prepare for and fit into you know our, our daily news digest concept of the show. And one is from my father-in-law, Peter Miller in California, who sent me some very interesting documents about overpopulation. Now, my general take on this is we can innovate our way out of anything, you know, and, and yeah, we only have five acres per human being on the planet right now. Most of that's not arable. I have, there. first of all, we are not even with current practices of, of housing and agriculture anywhere near capacity as a planet uh, in terms of supporting human life. I mean, you could say we're, we're you know, 8 billion-ish, you know, just under 8 billion global population. Now we can see us getting there. You know, the, 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 the tank is getting full, but it's not like, oh shit, you know, the food shortages that we have today are because of government. It, it, not just in the United States now, we see it, holy shit. Wendy's, where's the beef? Can't get meat to, to their restaurants. Yeah, no shit, there's, just, there's one little crack in the system. But globally, where you have food shortages, where, where, where you have people unable to feed themselves as, as wide populations in places where they are normally able to live and grow food is because of government. And I, I think that we have a huge potential already with current technology to multiply the living capacity for humans comfortably on this planet tenfold-ish. And, and this is a big part of what we're doing here with the Garden of Freedom. You know, I'm, I'm building on 10 acres. One of the houses that I'm building as, as a geodesic earth ship is, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a one bedroom. It's a 28 foot diameter dome. Now there's, there's a garage, a little extra roof space attached to it. But even here in the mountains of Northern Arizona, where we only get 12 and a half inches of rain per year, it's not a desert. The cutoff for desert is 10 inches of rain per year. Don't you dare call where I live a desert. Yeah. So. We're, we're, we're going to be able to build a house that collects rainwater, filters it, sends it to all of your faucets, then collects all of the wastewater and reprocesses that to grow plants inside the building. And with passive solar, where you have a thermal mass building and south facing glass, you're able to heat and cool this building with no energy input. So you've got basically a, a, a biosphere where the only inputs are water and sunlight. And if you're willing to eat a, a perfect vegan diet, which I am, and, and I know this is this is a little bit, uh, you know, this is this is the, the last gap in, in, in the system that we have to prove in concept here. If anybody wants to get involved in this, by the way, two, uh, uh, you know, my two other businesses that I, I recently really, uh, or one just totally created out of nothing with Big Igloo Geodesics, thanks to Ernie Hancock, freedomsphoenix.com, my favorite news aggregator site on the internet. Check it out, freedomsphoenix.com. We get a lot of stories from the show there every day 
Uh, we have a small business grant for Big Igloo Geodesics. If you want to buy a geodesic dome, hit us up, bigigloo.biz. Uh, we have a great uh, Instagram page with a lot of cool pictures and a Facebook page with our catalog and some explanations. Jim Freedom is our chief operating officer for Big Igloo Geodesics. And with the Garden of Freedom here, we were off the record for a long time, having been somewhat uh, bullied into silence by county zoning. But since they changed their policy to a complaint only system, as long as we're not hurting anybody, we're able to do whatever we want to do out here. So if you want to help out with this project, what we're doing is building a house that's essentially in a, a completely self-sustaining biodome <clears throat> where it's a closed loop of the biomass, right? What you need as a human to, to eat and survive comes from the plants in the house. You eat it, you poop it, the poop goes into the water processing system and goes back into creating more plants, more food. If you're willing to eat that perfect vegan diet there, I'm not saying everybody uh, you, you know, has to go straight to this. I also have uh, space for chickens and goats, so I plan on having a little bit more of a complex system here. But what we're creating, and even with, with chickens and goats, I mean, I, I could support a family very easily on a quarter acre. I have a great book called Mini Farming, and it, it's how to feed your family on an eighth of an acre of land. Uh, you look into, uh, and by the way, the planter system in, in what we're calling the sapioponic house. Sapioponic as opposed to hydroponic grown with water, aquaponic grown with fish, sapioponic grown with thoughtfulness or grown with humans, right? Homo sapiens. And what we're able to do is create uh, a housing system that is a is completely self-contained, zero waste, totally self-sustaining, off-grid, and gives you that freedom. I mean, this this is to me, this is the American dream that I am building for myself here. That you can take a plot of land and create a system on it that you can live off with no other input, that you don't need the outside world. And that means your interactions with the outside world are optional, which means you can opt out of the bad relationship. You can opt out of coercive relationships. You can render government obsolete because when people have this capability, which we already have, we just have to develop the techniques and apply the technology we have and show people how to employ it. We will render government obsolete. I'm not out here playing in the dirt just because I enjoy playing in the dirt, although I do. I really do. It, this, is, this is a part of my bigger purpose in life, to fight for justice, to empower people against authority. So if you want to get involved with that, uh, bigigloo.biz for the geodesics, thegardenoffreedom.com for everything we have going on here at the garden. Uh, both businesses there have uh, great Instagram pages, especially thanks to Comment Jim Freedom and his photography and videography skills. The, the Critters of the Garden of Freedom is a pretty cool gallery on Instagram. We've got scorpions and rabbits and snakes, all sorts of cool stuff. And, and, this was, and this was just from Jim being here for how long now? Uh, three weeks. Three maybe. weeks. Three weeks, all like that. And already it's just amazing what he's been able to do uh, with this opportunity. And we encourage other people, if you want a chance to live off grid. And I should go back to this right now because we talked about this when we first came out here. And that was, yeah, three or four weeks ago with, you know, coronaphobia lockdowns. We did our coronaphobia bug tour, out. bug out tour to get back here. And uh, we were hoping then that we would actually have more people you know, in, in gym situation or similar situations where, you know, you lost a job and you got enough money for one month's rent. Would you rather pay one month's rent and then be fucked or figure out a way to radically lower your living expenses, essentially to, if you can't come out here, food and your cell phone bill. If you're here, you're helping out, rent's free, really a lot of opportunities, a lot of different deals that we can negotiate if anybody wants to be a part of the Garden of Freedom, where we grow freedom to feed the world. So one more super chat here after all that rant spurred by Black Opal. Now that we know how to pronounce the name, Will Scott, $5, freedom! Yes, thank you. That's reminded me of the title of the book. There we go. All right.